What's going on guys? Today we're going to have a conversation about wanting to be liked and how that will create a deficiency in the blind spot in your life. Let's start off the conversation mentioning Spencer Cornelia. He has a YouTube channel and I was watching one of his videos and he said something that just struck me as odd that he was going to ignore Grant Cardone in the real estate niche and look to Graham Stephan and Ryan Pineda. Now, this is what's really funny about that statement. Grant Cardone makes more money per week than Graham Stephan, Ryan Pineda, Meet Kevin, collective net worth. Let me say that again. Grant Cardone makes more money in one week than Graham Stephan, Meet Kevin, um, Ryan Pineda's collective net worth. He makes more money in one, work, in one week than what they're worth between his companies and real estate empire. And it just struck me as odd that he would say such a thing that he would ignore and argumentatively, Grant Cardone is the most successful real estate investor on YouTube and Grant brings receipts. You can Google Grant's companies. You can Google his properties. Grant is real. And I feel that Spencer is a victim of one of the biggest bot uh, situations that happens. It's called bias. Bias can make a really incredibly smart person look stupid. Bias is this innate thing in you that makes you like or dislike something because of certain attributes that have nothing to do with facts or evidence. And for Spencer to say this with the facts being what they are, Grant Cardone is richer than Graham Stephan, Ryan Pineda, Meet Kev by himself. He's richer than all of them combined. They don't even come to, and I'm gonna say something, I'm gonna make a bold, bold statement. I don't feel that Graham Stephan, me, Kevin, or Ryan Pineda will ever reach the level of Graham, of Grant Cardone's wealth. And I'm gonna tell you why. They're too worried about being liked. I'm about to share a story with you of something that I learned early on. When I was in the storage auction business, the first six months were hell. And then once I started to learn the game, I learned a new game within the game and it's called light em up game. What I would do is anyone that bid against me, I would bid against them for months. And this is called running someone up. And if you don't know what that means is, it's making someone pay way more for a storage unit than they would. Like if you could have got the unit for 3,300, I make make you pay 600. I might make you pay 700. I might make you pay 800. And doing this strategy, I wasn't liked. People didn't like me. Sometimes when I would drive up there, it's like, oh shit, he's here. They didn't like me and I didn't care. And as a consequence of deploying this light them up strategy, a lot of people didn't care for me. They hated when I showed up for auctions. They didn't like me, but you know what? They respected me. This is a byproduct of the respect of me deploying a, a, a business tactic that a lot of people would not like. Because I remember I roll up and it's like, you gonna buy them all today? I was like, it depends on what's out there. If I like it, I'm gonna bid on it. And that's how my whole pre presentation was. Now let's go back to the conversation of having to like, you know, wanting to be liked is a weakness. It is a weakness. And also another part of that weakness is having to like your teachers and having to like the people that you work with. Now I'm at a point where I won't work with anyone that I don't like. I made a decision not to collaborate with the road wearing bitch a long time ago, long before I even made that video, because there's inconsistencies in what, what his presentation. I'm just, I just don't even think dudes mean there. And, you know, from that standpoint, I will not work with someone. But 
I'm gonna tell you a story. There was this guy on the storage auction trail named Bobby. And Bobby was a racist. Not, I thought that Bobby was a racist, I knew that Bobby was a racist. If you remember the movie Deliverance with Burt Reynolds, he looked like that. From the hills, he came down in a little red truck with a little wagon behind it and a little, little trailer. And he didn't like me and I didn't like him. And because I had developed this reputation of, I would bid against anyone. I would like, there was a U-Haul trail on Saturdays and there was this guy named Sam Yang. And the auctioneer said, you're the only one that will bid against him. Because here's another thing. Once you develop this reputation, people will not bid against you. Because it's just like, it's too painful. It's like, why get your hopes up? Because he's going to do it. He's going to do it. So one Saturday, not a Saturday, I think it was a Thursday or Friday, Bobby and I show up at a public storage auction. And they have like 30 units and none of the regulars are there. It's just me and Bobby and a bunch of newbies. And Bobby comes to me. I don't go to Bobby, Bobby comes to me. He said, look, you don't bid against me, I won't bid against you. And I, at the moment, I did not believe him because I didn't like him, I didn't trust him. So as we were going on, the first few units was, you know, they love tool units, they love, you know, the big tool units with Mac box and all kinds of a construct. They love stuff like that. And I, as a consequence, didn't like stuff like that because I was selling mostly washer and dryer, sofas, bedroom sets and stuff. So I had a different niche than Bobby. And the first unit that comes up is a unit that he likes and it looked like hell. And I could see there was value in it and he bid on it. And I never, let me say a word because I didn't really want it. Because, you know, there was 30 units there who knew what was coming up and uh, I didn't bid on it. And then the new people were like, hey, he's crazy. He's bidding on that trash, right? Then we get into it. There's some more units. A few new people get units. There's stuff. I'm not seeing anything that I like. And then we go to about four or five units. And then the fifth unit is a unit that I like. It was a unit that was professionally moved. Uh, you can see the strength wrapped. Because here's the thing, when you buy storage units from people who move them themselves, there's always going to be substantial damage. Because even with movers, there could be damage, but not as much as regular people moving their stuff. And this was a 10 by 20, full from the Ruta to the Tuda. I opened up the bid at 100 bucks. A few of the newbies tried to toy with me. I got the unit for 350. If it had been a normal day and the regular folks had been there, that unit would have been every bit of a thousand bucks. Easy, easy. And I was like, and Bobby didn't say a word. So we go ahead, Bobby gets a few more units and I collectively leave with 10 of the units. I spent maybe 2,500. If everyone else was there, I would have spent five or 6,000. And from that day on, Bobby never bid against me. Now let's kind of take it back. Bobby's a racist. I developed a working relationship that I made hundreds of thousands of dollars with a racist, a person who didn't like black people. I didn't really care for him, but we were able to work together. You wanna know why we were able to work together? Cause I don't have biases. I'm just like, I ain't gonna never work with a racist. I've worked with many racists, but you know, there, there were a lot of racists out there on the storage auction trail. There was a ton of them. And I developed working relationships with most of them because I had developed that reputation because one of the things that happened when I was in the storage auction business is I was selling on eBay, I was selling on Craigslist. A lot of these guys, they weren't selling on eBay and they weren't selling on Craigslist. So this gave me a lot of capital to duke it out with them because I became one of the big dogs within about a year and a half. And they were just like shocked because, you know, I, I noticed early on that the people who were able to consistently buy and spend ridiculous amounts of money or what I thought was ridiculous amounts of money at the time, they bought certain kind of units and I started to mirror 
mirror and model that behavior. Once again, I didn't like these motherfuckers, but I learned from these motherfuckers. I didn't like them because see, if you're in the position where you have to like your teacher and your mentor, you have created a fundamental weakness in your learning process, such as Spencer Cornelia. Like I said, uh, Graham Stephan and all these other people. Here's the thing with Graham Stephan, Meet Kevin, and Ryan Pineda. Ryan Pineda is more business oriented than Graham Stephan and Meet Kevin, but Meet Kevin and Graham Stephan, the only reason that they have as much money as they do is because of YouTube. And what's gonna happen with YouTube? You're never gonna be able to scale to Grant Cardone's level of wealth with YouTube. It's not gonna happen. Mr. Beast, who is argumentably the biggest YouTuber, only does 24 million a year. Grant Cardone does that in a week. Let me say that again. Grant Cardone does that in a week. So even the biggest YouTuber cannot touch Grant Cardone's money. So, and here's something that's gonna happen. At some point, Graham Stephan's popularity is gonna wane, It's gonna go down. Take Friends, the television show. Friends, it was on 13 seasons and then it wrapped up because the ratings dropped. You only have so long to be an entertainer before people get tired of you. So Graham Stephan, Meet Kevin, Ryan Pineda, they've got, now Ryan Pineda, he is, like I said, he's more business oriented than Graham and Meet Kevin, and he's much more successful as a businessman. So if out of all of them, who has a shot of even coming close to Grant Cardone is Ryan Pineda. But once again, you know, Ryan Pineda is still in that I want to be liked category. I want to be your buddy, your pal, your friend. And Bill Gates did not become a billionaire by being a nice guy. Elon Musk, he's another one. Elon Musk will do something to suit his interests in a heartbeat and everyone else be damned. Because see, if you want to be liked, and we're gonna take the case of the nice guy, what, what, what we know what happens with the nice guy? I'll tell you a story. Years ago, I was working at a warehouse called Horizon Pacific Home. It, it used to be a high-end furniture store in Buckhead. And one day this beautiful woman comes in and the guy I'm working with, Stan, he just gives her a piece of pottery that we were bringing off the truck and we were supposed to put, and that piece of pottery never made it into inventory. So that was gonna be a loss for the company. He just gives it to her because he wanted this woman to like him, just to like him. And this is one of the reasons that so many men suffer because they want to be liked versus respected. Now going back to me and my light them up strategy, a lot of people didn't like me. They really didn't like me. I mean, people would start cussing when I showed up to auction. They would start cussing because they knew when I showed up, it was playtime was over. There was no fun and games. Whatever little deals that they have collectively put together didn't matter because if I saw a unit that I wanted, I was going to go hard. And if I didn't get it, I was going to cost them a lot of money. So as a rule, a lot of people didn't like me. But I'm gonna tell you, about two years into this strategy, I started to get units super cheap because people wouldn't bid against me. That's the power of not giving a damn if people like you. I was getting units cheap, like two years until I got out the storage auction business because my reputation went before me. I remember I was out there at the storage auction trail and some new people came up and they were having a conversation about me before I even got there. And I got there and it's like, yeah, that's him. He buys up everything. You have to be careful with him because if you offend him, he will bid on every unit that you want to bid on for months. And he will make your life difficult out here. I'm just telling you, man, you're new out here. You don't want to start with him. You don't want to start with him. And they were just sitting there and I'm just sitting there like, I can hear you. And the guy listened and he didn't bid against me. He didn't bid against me. So this whole notion of being liked, 
Like with my current situation in that video, a whole bunch of people, you know, there was hashtag cancel Glendon Cameron, uh, a bunch of trolls leaving stuff. I really don't care. I really don't care if these nameless, faceless cowards. And you know, with that, whenever I go to block them, I'll consistently see the same thing. Cartoons, world star, mental junk food. I never see anything of substance. I, it, it, once again, these are the left behind people. These are the worthless people. This is the lower economic strata. And why would I care if someone who's broke likes me? Why would I care if someone who can do nothing for me? Why would I, why would I even care? Why would I even care? Because that's something that came out of me a long, long, like years and years ago. Because when I was on the storage auction trail, and once I started in the beginning, I was trying to be buddy, buddy. And I found out that strategy was woefully ineffective. It was woefully, because one of the things is once you start to become buddy, buddy, and you start to form your little relationships and you start to form these deals and it gets very complicated. It gets very complicated. So that's kind of part of my warrior code. I'd rather do battle than uh, have a dinner. And I've just learned over the years that wanting to be liked, craving to be liked is a weakness. And it is a big, big weakness that will keep you broke, that will keep you poor. Like Spencer, I don't think Spencer is a dumb guy, but Spencer's biases are going to prevent him from becoming rich as he could. Because I'm learning from Grant Cardone. I, like, I'm not trying to learn from Graham Stephan. I'm not trying to learn from Ryan Pineda. I'm not trying to learn from me, Kevin. Because honestly, I feel that at certain times, YouTube chooses certain people. And once you're chose, you, chosen, you can do no wrong. And I feel Graham Stephan was chosen. I really do. And I feel me, Kevin was chosen. Ryan Pineda, he hasn't been chosen because he 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 was moving and then he just kind of leveled out. So I don't think Ryan's going to get chosen. But, you know, I am learning from Grant Cardone because Grant Cardone has a billion dollar business. Why would I ignore someone who has built a billion dollar business? Like if you've noticed, a lot of stuff is changing in the next six months, you're going to see a vast amount of change because there are so many things that I can learn from Grant from his online educational business, which did $150 million in one year. That's only part of his money chain. That's only part of his financial ecosystem. And one of the things I'm doing, because uh, once I get ready to launch this new channel, Intellectual Property, I'm going to dig hard into it because I have, you know, I've sold office furniture, I've sold stuff for doing the intellectual property thing has made me the most money ever. Most money ever. Like right now, I can already tell you what my budget is for 2022. I already have the money in the bank to pay my bills for 2022. I made that in three days. Three days. So the intellectual property game, which is something that Grant plays, Grant plays intellectual property and Grant plays the real estate game. And he plays both of them very, very well. Grant is at institutional investor level. Institutions like pension funds and stuff will loan Grant money. He's at that level. Graham Stephan ain't at that level. Ryan Pineda ain't at that level. Me, Kevin ain't at that level. So part of this bias is a lack of education and a lack of respect. Once again, I don't think Spencer is dumb, but Spencer has a lot of biases because he's young. And this is, uh, there was another guy, he looks like a little wolf, and he was talking about how Meet Kevin was more successful than Grant Cardone. From a fact, st fact, fact standpoint, that is not even close to true, but, I've noticed that these 30 something guys are full of biases and they're full of their, they're full of themselves 
And for the ones who hit the YouTube lottery, they're kind of reckless because once again, like I said, Friends, The Cosby Show, Seinfeld, Cheers, all of these great television shows, they ran for a long time and then they went off the air and now they're playing reruns. The same thing's gonna to happen to Graham Stephan. The same thing's gonna to happen to me, Kevin. The same thing's gonna to happen to Ryan. But the, the same thing, because at some point, their audience is gonna get tired of them or they're gonna get tired of making the content. One of those things is gonna happen and it, it's gonna dramatically shut down. Um, but guys, you got to get this wanting to be liked stuff out of your head. You have got to, I, I, I cannot emphasize how important it is for you to fundamentally look at subjects from a fact standpoint and take your biases out of this. Like one of the things that's happening, and this is something I predicted, there's a lot of people with the hashtag cancel Glendon Cameron. And I'm starting to see different comments. It's like, you know, all these people coming after you and they're saying these things and it's, it's like you're moving like, you're, you're just like you you you're 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 unfazed. You're just still doing what you're doing, and I kind of like that. So I am going to start converting some of the hashtag cancel Glendon Tamron people into fans. Why? Because I don't care if people like me. I don't really think you know. Like I said, for the people who support me, who leave positive comments, I appreciate you guys. But to a degree, I don't really get too high off my own supply. You know what I mean by that? Like for you guys to support me, once again, I appreciate the positive comments. I appreciate you duking it out with the dissenters. I really do. But I only take that so far. I don't like, man, they left all these comments. I'm the best. I don't get high on my own supply. So I don't get down from the negative comments and I don't get too high from the positive comments. I have this middle ground that I stay in because I have to be aware, I have to be on point and I have to operate based on facts. Because like right now, I am just seeing this, that there's so many people who want to be liked. Kevin Samuels, he actually put out some content that was very polarizing. Look what happened to him, he blew up. Kevin doesn't care if you like him or not. He blew up. He simply blew up. And one of the things that you have to understand, like take O'Shea Duke Jackson. O'Shea Duke Jackson has figured out that people like junk food. They like garbage. And that's why he created the celebrity junk. That's why he does the things he does, because it works. He can put up a celebrity junk video. They'll have 25,000 views before in four hours so he understands what works for him and one of the things that i am doing and just to be factual is i am not going to do topical or what's you know like the metaverse i will never do a video on the metaverse i will never do a video on this channel talking about um the the guy who just got acquitted for shooting those guys this isn't this isn't the place for that because once again going back to graham stephan going back to meet kevin ryan pineda when you do those topical type of videos you get a lot of views but you disturb your core audience because i got people here who are not coming here for the i could have been a predator video that's why i want to do that on this channel they're not coming here for topical stuff they're coming here for economic they're coming here for how to, they're coming in here for money mindset stuff. And that's what I'm gonna give them. And for that hardcore audience, I can make millions. I only have 103 103,000 subscribers on this channel, but I make more money than people with a million subscribers. I make more money than people with two and three and four and five and 10 million subscribers because I'm not pandering for views. I'm building a core audience. And this is something I'm gonna talk about on the intellectual property channel because one of the things is if you like, there's this girl and she has a personal finance channel and she has a really strong following and her people watch her videos, right? She only has like 24,000 subscribers and this girl makes $8,000 a month AdSense. 
she's going to do almost six figures this year in AdSense because she has a devoted following. She has people who plug in. Like I haven't evaluated Graham Stephan's channel because like I said, I don't watch his content. I don't really. Ryan Pineda, he was kind of interesting at a moment. I've not watched the Meet Kevin video in a year or two. So I don't really know what these guys are doing. But I do know that when you jump on the topical trendy stuff, that can grow your channel. But here's the thing. When you create that type of content and it wins with the YouTube algorithm, guess what you got to do? You got to keep creating that type of content because the minute that you deviate from that content, your views are going to go dramatically down because that's what the YouTube algorithm will push from your channel. So you got to be real careful. This is one of the reasons that I am uh, redoing the personal finance channel because I had the how to get no, no credit check loan videos, which took off. And this disturbed my eco base because the people who came for the no credit check credit videos were not interested in budgeting, were interested in any other stuff. So they didn't watch those videos and that harmed the channel. But guys, once again, you have got to rid yourself of this notion to be liked. It is going to limit your opportunities. Give you an example. And I've told this story before, and I'm going to tell it again. I used to work for Rent Crate, and I was going up to Boston for a Watham, actually Watham, Watham, Massachusetts, for a sales meeting. And there was this beautiful woman on the plane next to me who was sending me, don't talk to me. I'm not interested in you. Leave me ignore. I mean, she was sending all of those vibes, and I completely ignored them. Completely ignored them. And I ended up fucking that chick. Why? Because I didn't care what she thought of me. I put, I inserted my agenda. So guys, if you want to be liked, like I said, uh, you know, I saw a conversation. It's like Lyndon been working all these years and this is the thing he's going to be remembered for. And I was like, no, it ain't. <laughs> it ain't going to be the thing I'm going to be remembered for. Because one of the things I have seen, and this is why I play in the intellectual property arena is I can create more content. I can create more training. I can create more products and hustlers. Kung Fu was my, you know, making money A to Z with self storage units was my first winning digital product. My second winning digital product was hustlers Kung Fu. And my third winning product was the corporate toolbox. And my fourth, winning product was the corporate papers. But if you will notice, there was a big gap between making money A to Z with self storage and auctions. And then there was a big gap between hustlers, Kung Fu and the corporate toolbox. But notice there was not a big gap between the corporate toolbox and corporate papers. They were a year apart. They were a year apart. And I got some else I'm working on. So once again, I'm learning my craft. So my, my intentions is to launch more digital training programs in 2022. And I'm going to make so much money. It's going to be ridiculous because why am I making money? Number one, I don't care if you like me, I really don't. So this gives me incredible license to do what I want to do. Um, it creates incredible opportunities for me because I am not worried about your judgment. I'm like, your judgment, let me ask you a question. How much does, how much money does your judgment put in my pocket? How much money does your judgment take out my pocket? Not that much. It puts no money in my pocket. It takes no money in my pocket. So your judgment from a currency standpoint is worthless to me. So why would I even worry about how you feel? How would I worry about it? Because let's take Cardi B. Cardi B went on public record talking about when she was a prostitute, how she used to rob and her popularity did not dip one iota. You want to know why? Cardi B's brand was built on nastiness. It was built on, you know, she's a stripper. She was a stripper. So she had a brand that could take that hit. It's like, well, she was a stripper. She was an escort. That's what they do. No one was shocked when she said that. And this is one of the things with my brand. 
like for years. Um, I've been talking about this stuff for years. So my brand from a core audience didn't really take a hit at all. And actually over time, what I'm starting to see is I'm gonna get more and more and more and more and more followers and people plugging into the brand because I'm honest, unlike the road wearing bitch. I think he's a lying sack of shit. And uh, I, I may and do, do a little investigation to prove that. But guys, one of the things is you have to get away from wanting to be liked and you have to get away from having to like your teachers. Once again, I have made money, so much money from people I didn't care for. But at the end of the day, we were able to come to a consensus and make money together, which is so funny when you talk about the black community and all of the black love and all the black affinity and all the black fellowship, but black folks rarely can come together to make money, but there's so much love. Why is that? Why is that? So go ahead, get the book, Making Money with Self-Storage Auctions. The links will be below. And I will see you guys in the next video.